battlefront. And before them is nature, and I think it contrasts nature with what a desert has been made of those fields in the sun. Halted against the shade of the last hill they fed, and lying easy were at ease, and finding comfortable chest and knees, carelessly slept. But money there stood still to face the stark blank sky beyond the ridge, knowing their feet had come to the end of the world. Marvelling they stood and watched the long grass swirling by the May breeze, murmurous with wasp and midge. For though the sun oozed into their veins like an injected drug for their body's pains, sharp on the souls from the imminent line of grass, fearfully flashing the sky's mysterious glass, hour after hour they pondered the warm field, and the far valley behind them, where the buttercup had blessed with goals their slow boots coming up, where even the little brambles would not yield, but clutched and clung to them like sorrowing hands, they breathed like trees unstirred. Till, like a cold gust thrilled the little world, and with each body and each soul beguined, and tightened them for battle. No alarms, or bugles, or high flags, no clamorous haste, only a lift and the flare of eyes that face the sun, like a friend with whom their love is done. O Lager shone that smile against the sun, mightier than his whose beauty they had spurned. So soon they topped the hill and raced together over the open stretch of herb and heather exposed. And instantly the whole sky burned with fury against them. Earth set sudden cups in thousands for their blood, and the green slope chasmed and deepened sheer to infinite space. Of them who were running on that last high place, left to swift unseen bullets, or went up on the hot blast and fury of hell's upsurge, or plunged and fell away past this world's edge, some say God caught them even before they fell. But what say such from existence bring, ventured but drave too swift to sink, the few who rushed in the body to enter hell, and there are fiended all of its fiends and flames with superhuman inhumanities. Long famous glories, immemorial shames, and crawling back, slowly back, had by decree, and gained cool, peaceful air and money. Then why not speak of comments? That one to me. Thank you. I'll just do uh, uh, futility and, uh, and then, then one way on and then uh, we'll have a break and be back again at three o'clock with, with the whole set again. We've still got a voice. <laughs> um, again, this one is, um, I've got to sit down for this one. I'll see you later. Finally. But, uh, uh, this is the poem. Uh, in which he's talking about really about how meaningless it uh, uh, the war that he sees can be. Move him into the sun. Gently as touch a walking noise. Whispering of fields on sun. Always be walking, even in France. Until this morning, in this summer. If anything might rise in now, the kind old sun will know. Think how it lifts the seeds. Walk once the clay of a cold star. Our limbs so dear achieved, our sides full nerves still warm. It's too hot to stay. Was it for this that the great grew tall? Oh, what fatuous sunbeams toil to break earth's sleep as well. So that's uh, futility. I need to lose exactly where I am. 
And uh, I mean, it just captured everything about how sometimes you you you, you do wonder uh, how people act and uh, what it is to be human. And then, uh, just to finish off this uh, section, um, this is the poem I did uh, uh, in the first call for. Uh, no disrespect to any people who are serving me, it's a very difficult situation across the world. The Sound of Silence. I love the sounds of America, its melting pot spilling onto the streets, its ability to fly in no fly zones. Its ability to kill people who have nothing to eat. I love the sounds of America setting souls of fire. Its love of freedom, its pursuit of pain, all in God's name. I love the sounds of America echoing down the streets. Wherever you go, I go. Whatever you say, I say. Whenever you die, I die. God bless America, land of the free, lighting up the world and terrifying me. Thank you very much. <laughs>